beautiful, man. That was, I love that. Well, I had real shoes to fill, so I was honored to get to do it with, with you and for you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, it was, you sound incredible. You and my band, I was like, oh, I could listen to this all day. That whole vibe is so perfect for all of y'all. <laughs> um, but thank you for stepping in for me with that song. Did you sing Christmas music growing up? Are you a big fan? Yeah, we grew up without television, without radio, and so singing was like our main tradition. So tons of Christmas songs and folk songs and Swiss German songs, all kinds for the holidays. Oh, that's so fun. Well, you also sang, I love this, we just had Dolly on, I love Dolly Parton, and you recently sang for her, right? Yeah, I love, isn't Dolly the best? Yeah, it was really honored. Uh, Lauren Sanchez and Jeff Bezos had me come and get to sing for her as she was awarded that $100 million civility grant. It was incredible. And I actually got to sing uh, Jolene for her there, which made me very nervous, but it was very fun. Yeah. You know what? I'll tell you what. I've had to sing one of her songs in front of her, and it is terrifying because you're you know what I'm saying the person is there that's their baby they made it iconic you're like what am I doing like it is terrifying even if you feel like a confident singer it's like man don't screw this up <laughs> yeah, I had like the sweat mustache the sweaty boobs the whole nine yards yeah. you guys know what I'm talking about it's real <laughs> I have like the sweat trickles down the back that's what happens it's to ugly. Me. Yep. Um, so, do you remember the first time you met Dolly, or maybe one of your favorite experiences with her? Because you've worked with her a few times. Yeah, so I grew up on a homestead with an outhouse. So, her for me growing up was like a hero because she had a somewhat similar lifestyle. So, I was really yeah. excited. Um, I had her sing on a song of mine called My Father's Daughter. She came in and sang. She showed up like that. That was 7 45 a.m. <laughs> she looks on point at all times. <laughs> She put me at ease. She's like, now, hey, I'm so glad that I'm here, but I need you to keep me honest in case I don't sing good. And in case you're too intimidated, I brought a guy to keep me honest. And I was like, all right. <laughs> That's amazing. I love your impression. <laughs> I, I love her. I thought, and I thought that was so cool that Jeff actually chose her for that grant because she's, I mean, her whole career, she's done amazing things musically, obviously, as a... As a, as a human, she's done incredible things for educators, like reading, for just so many things. She's, she's just a, a person that's constantly giving. So it was like the perfect person to, to grant that money to do good with. I was, I was very stoked about that. Um, but you also recently took a trip to Italy, which I love Italy. So you ate breakfast, and where was this? This was in, let's see, where was I? In Venice at the Amman Hotel. My son and I, I had some work, I had some shows over there, but my son and I made a vacation of it. And this was in this incredible place. It had like painted ceilings. It's not like Alaska, y'all. There was like, <laughs> there was toilet paper and everything. And it was nice. <laughs> it was fancy. <laughs> I, I love, I took a trip to Italy uh, once and I actually went to Venice and uh, did you, it's cool to go on the steps like around the thing. Did you see, um, I, I ended up seeing like, Vivaldi Four Seasons, they dressed up like in character. You went in the room and sat in the seats and listened like as if it was back in the day. Did you do anything like that? Okay, that sounds way better than what I did. I ate a gelato. Oh. And, <laughs> but yours sounds like it was winning. <laughs> I was like, well, I think I, did, I didn't know if I'd ever go back because I also did feel claustrophobic because the water at night, I was like, am I drowning? So I don't know if I thought I'd ever go back. So I was like, I need to do it all like really quickly, but I definitely had gelato too, girl. <laughs> um, so is it, is it true that your grandfather was actually from Italy? Switzerland, and he believed that Europe was going to oh. fail. He thought that if Europe hit a certain population index, the whole civilization would fail. He talked artists, poets, philosophers, and painters into thinking maybe this was true. They all decided to leave Europe and form like a free place in Alaska where they were giving away free land if you would go up there for a whole winter and not mm -hmm. die. So he went ahead of them on a boat and he stowed away on an Italian ship and was discovered. But my granddad's specialty was learning folk songs in the dialects of different villages. And so he happened to recognize the captain's dialect and guessed the village he was from in Italy and he happened to be right and they gave him safe passage and that's how he ended up in Alaska. Yeah, crazy, right? What? Yeah. That's, that's a really cool story. That's an amazing story of how your family navigated their way and ended up in Alaska, which it, which my brother actually lived there for like seven years. And it that is hard um, to do. Like, cause the sun is just gone for like yeah. a long period of time. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Yeah, it's a lot different than Switzerland, I feel like. <laughs> so Joel, how have the holidays been for you so far? Like how was Thanksgiving? 
It was good. I'm a single mom, as you know, so single parenting is a, a big adjustment. Mm -hmm. I've been divorced for seven years. So my ex keeps my son for Thanksgiving, and I have him for Christmas, and it's really great, but it's a trip to get used to being alone for a holiday like that, and all my family are in Alaska. But it wasn't too bad. I didn't that, mean it to be like uh, oh, tiny violins. It was like, wah, wah, brought the show down. <laughs> no, I liked I, no, it's so funny. I'm gonna turn it around. Like I, my my ex actually has my kids every Thanksgiving as well. Um, it's not like my favorite holiday. So and I and it is for his family. So I was like, cool. And um, I actually, it was weird for me. I don't know if it was. I know you've been you know divorced for a while, but it was so weird because you've always had a kid there, and then all of a sudden you're alone, and you're like, at first it's weird, and then you're kind of like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I can do things. <laughs> like, it's kind of incredible. You do get a little me time. Yeah, I feel like it must be good preparation for emptiness syndrome. It's like it forces me to invest. and like, I yeah. have to do things before I had a child. I suddenly seem to forget what I right. did. Suddenly when I'm alone, I'm like, what did I do? I did things. <laughs> But you get better at it. I know, I know. But it, in the beginning, you're just, I was like a mess. But now I'm like, it's awesome. You know, and then you have, you you know, absence does make the heart grow fonder. Um, so <laughs> you're spearheading actually something called the hashtag not alone challenge. So tell us about that. Yeah, so I moved out at 15. I knew statistically kids like me end up repeating the cycle. And I didn't want to be a statistic. I grew up in a family where abuse had been generational. And so I wanted to see if happiness was a learnable skill. Um, so I learned a lot of skills for myself that really helped me learn what I call a new emotional language. Because not everybody has access to therapy. In fact, 50% of the people that need mental health help don't have access to any tools. And happiness shouldn't be elite. It shouldn't be just for the people that can afford something or afford a therapist. So the hashtag not alone challenge is bringing proven tools that can scale to everybody that lives in these mental health deserts. I love, that is so important. And it's also like, not only that people can't afford it, I know people like from where I'm from in the South, it's still kind of looked down upon and, and people get shamed for it. And which is such a crazy thing to me, um, for lack of a better word, um, because it's, it's one of those things, it's nice to have somebody outside your circle that literally is trained in ways to help you navigate, give you tools, with whatever you're dealing with. It's a, it's it's like if you need help with your car, you go to a mechanic, if you need help, you know what I'm saying? If you, it just seems so natural to me, but I, it's not only, it's, it's amazing because the money, but also I think society need, needs to really change and evolve um, in the sense of quit shaming people for it or, or looking down upon it. Um, yeah, I but how, how can people get involved? Oh, if you want to get involved, go to notalonechallenge.org, and there you'll find a lot of mental health tools for free. You'll find a ton of resources, and then you can also find all of our auction items there. And we have incredible auction items. We're raising money to be able to scale proven behavioral tools so that everybody has access to them. That's incredible, Joel. That's so cool. Um, so I hear that there's an auction and like even like tickets like from sports tickets to like Billie Eilish tickets, um, you're offering something cool as well, right? Yeah, I thought that I would write a personalized song so people can bid on a song that I'll write. I'll write about your dog, if that's what you want me to write it about. I'll write about your mama. I'll write about your son. Uh, but I thought that'd be fun so people can bid on that. I, I love, that's such a cool thing. It's such a personal thing to do for someone. It's really cool.